Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the most hardcore people I've ever met in my entire life, Lindsay Bull, who you might remember from this video that we filmed a little over a year ago when something uh, pretty crazy happened to you that went, that went viral, and that involved you being bitten and then rolled by a pretty good size American alligator in front of a birthday party. <laughs> and, and I was wondering if you'd kind of, you know, remind us what happened that day. Because um, we want to find out what's happened since then. But, you know, for people who've forgotten or who haven't seen that, like, what, what happened? Sure, yeah. So I was in the shop, Scales and Tails, um, just for a routine Saturday public hours that we do. Mm -hmm. And I, because I was in, had planned to go ahead and feed Darth, um, but I found that there was a birthday party scheduled about halfway through the day, so I decided I'll just feed him for the birthday party. We, that's one of the parts or uh, benefits of having a party in the shop is we do something like a special demonstration for him. Oh yeah. And so that's what I planned to do. And it was all things completely as expected. Um, the kids were a little nervous at first, but then they started to warm up to all the reptiles. And so then it was maybe 30 minutes before they were supposed to end. And I said, okay, we're gonna do this demonstration with Darth Gator. I lined everybody up on the side of the enclosure. And that's where in the video, you see kind of some kids looking in. Mm -hmm. They're kind of standing up on a bench and then I'm around the side. I told them actually that the, it was gonna be boring for a couple minutes because <laughs> We've talked about this before, but... Yeah, I don't think you kept your word. <laughs> his his behavior is really predictable. So <laughs> yeah. every single time that I open the enclosure, he tries to push forward because he knows that he's getting fed. Mm -hmm. And he did exactly that. But he has a command, the back command. is a little counterintuitive for an animal. It's asking them to go away from where they know they're go going to get food. Mm -hmm. So it always takes a couple minutes for him to respond to it. So I told him it's going to be boring, anticipating that it was going to be a few minutes. Well, we went back and forth until he finally went back into his enclosure. But he ended up pushing like really far forward. And so I did a maneuver where I took my hand, the hand I was using for the commands, and dropped it under his mandible and pushed him back. So then I'm physically in contact with him, we're struggling back and forth for a little bit, and eventually he turned his head to the side. And because he made that decision before I made the decision to pull away, that pressure between us caused my hand to pop up from underneath his jaw touched the outside of his face, and you know this, but if an alligator has something touch its face, it's gonna get it in its mouth. Uh, it, they're very accurate and very quick yes. at that point. So my hand touched his face and ended up inside his mouth. Um, at that point, we kind of had a little bit of a, a struggle back and forth. He thrashed his head, uh, so I grabbed his face to see if I couldn't control him a little bit better. He started to pull back on me, and that indicated to me that he was probably gonna do the death roll. And so I went ahead and used the leverage from him pulling back on me to climb into the enclosure. And then it was pretty soon after that that he went belly up and we yeah, did he a made, He made a good, probably a full rotation before, I before you could get all the way in there. Yeah. I, it was, uh, I, I remember when I was watching that video the very first time, I was thinking, oh no. I, I, I didn't, you know, I asked the person who was showing it to me, I'm like, does she lose her hand? And, and I was really grateful for the conversation we had before that made sense of how on earth it didn't happen, but there was, there was a lot of luck involved. There was a ton of luck, yeah. I mean, I had gone through that scenario in my head a million times leading up to it, so I, I kind of knew what to anticipate every step of the way, and I was, I was anticipating it as it all happened, but when I went back and watched the video, it was like, I got lucky there, I got lucky there. You know, it's a lot of preparation that I think put me in a position where the best case scenario could play out, but then there was a lot of luck involved too. Yeah, just the way your hand was turned so yeah. that it could make that extra rotation. Now, now after he rotated, you have then got around him Yeah. in one of the most hardcore <laughs> uh, wrestling positions with an alligator I've ever seen. Yeah, I tried to like figure for him with my legs, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which... I, I don't know. I didn't have a ton of energy at that point. And it was, well, it was amazing. <laughs> and I, it, I think it absolutely saved your hand Thank and you. maybe your life because yeah. losing, a, losing a limb in that way is not a minor injury. No, not at all. And, and, and then, but then it wasn't just you that was involved. Yeah, so at that point, and it, it was actually, so we rolled and this guy, Donnie Wiseman, 
kind of runs in like a guardian angel out of nowhere and grabs me by the shoulders, pulls me up, and that's what enabled me to, that's when my legs kind of swung around and mm -hmm. enabled me to try to get him in the triangle choke. And he started asking me, what do you want me to do? And I like kind of assessed the situation, you know, my arm's already in his mouth, my legs are around his neck, go ahead and just sit on his back because that'll keep him from rolling yeah. again. And so he, without hesitation, jumps in, which I have people tell me I'm brave all the time, but I choose to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. He acted without hesitation. He did a really smart thing. He listened to the person that knew what was going on, but he acted without hesitation and what he did was very brave, very heroic. Mm -hmm. um, sat on his back, uh, kept me cognizant for <laughs> several, uh, two minutes, I think, mm -hmm. that we waited for Darth to release. And then, um, at the point that he did eventually let go, another individual, his name's Todd, um, pulled me out of the enclosure. And then I looked back in there and saw Donnie still sitting on <laughs> Darth's back and realized like, oh gosh, we got to get him off the alligator. And I was so, you know, my hand was pretty torn up. My head was ringing. So yeah, your wrist was broken, right? Are those scars? You've still yeah. got some pretty good scars. Yeah, so you can see. You would want scars from something like that. Definitely. Like it'd be a shame if you didn't have any. Though I don't think that anybody's ever going to believe that. <laughs> One time I, it was like not that long after I was in the accident. I got, I had to fly somewhere for work. And I sat down in my seat and there's a woman sitting next to me. And I had the scars here that were like, they were still kind of like blood was on them. Yeah. And she's like, what happened to your hand? And I told her I got bitten by an alligator. And she's like. And just like turn away and talk to me. She's like, you're lying. No, 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 really. Google it really me. happened. Google yeah. me. <laughs> but yeah, it looks pretty good. I had a really good surgeon. Very fortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not, you know, like a Frankenstein scar, but it's, it's exactly the scar that you want to have after something like that. Have you, uh, I, I, I mean to ask you, have you, have you spoken to Donnie since then? then? Yeah, yeah. And how was that? Um, it was great. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. You want to be friends with somebody like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you, like you were saying, you know, you were in that situation. You were prepared for a situation like that, and you handled it in, I think, the best imaginable way. And, and that's amazing and super commendable, you know. And then Donnie, though, like, just a pure hero. Yeah. Right. That, like that's all that was. Was Absolutely. that you know that was going above and beyond by far what would be expected of a person in that situation and. Um, you know, like you had done what you needed to do probably to minimize your injuries, but still like how exactly you get out of there and, you know, at what point you become exhausted or go into shock right. was going to be a big deal. And so without his help, that, that would have been certainly much worse. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. He came in at just the right moment and did everything that you would want somebody to do in that situation. Absolutely. So how are you doing now? Good. Yeah? Great, yeah. Uh, how, how, like, like physically, it seems like you've healed. Yeah. So, yeah, I pretty much full range of motion no in the deal. wrist. Um, and then, yeah, like pretty minimal scarring. So, like, aesthetically, it does it, it, it's not, like you said, a Frankenstein scar or anything like that. Yeah. It'd be unfair if you had less scarring. It's just the perfect <laughs> amount of scarring. Exactly. So you can have that conversation with people on planes. That's right. And, and, and how, uh, how about emotionally? I never, it, because I knew that that was something that could happen, mm -hmm. I never experienced any trauma from it. I would say probably the most traumatic thing was like, I am not the center of attention type person mm -hmm. at all. And so like all the media interactions that happened um, immediately following it was probably like the most traumatic. Well, and I think probably on a few levels, right? Because not only was that you're, you're the center of a lot of attention, worldwide yeah. but on top of that like it it threatens scales and tails it threatened the long-term survival of Darth Gator who you care about very much and so like that would be a huge amount of burden I, I know I know and I, I can see it now and I, I saw it then you know a, a lot of people uh, commented on on our original video that they, they were worried about your emotional health you know, and just reliving that experience. And, you know, and I'd spoken to you about it beforehand to make sure it was okay with you. At no point during our actual conversation did I get any idea that you were having any difficulty talking about the, those actual events. But I know when we talked about Darth Gator, 
and the uncertainty of his long-term survival and well-being, that's when I could see that, like, you know, it was, that you were very concerned about that. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're 100% right. It, it was never difficult for me to talk about what happened mm -hmm. um, or relive it or anything. I want to make sure that nobody feels like that was the case. But the, I guess, you know, you get that type of attention um, and it's going to open up, type, you know, the doors to people demanding the alligator gets relocated or in some instances euthanized mm -hmm. uh, the shop gets shut down and this is the livelihood for a lot of people that i care about yeah. deeply as well and that yeah that was <laughs> definitely the uh the emotional struggle through the whole thing absolutely how has this impacted you long term it really <laughs> it really hasn't changed much of anything, I wouldn't say. I did make new friends because of it. Yeah. Obviously, Donnie and Amy and Todd that were there that day, um, and their daughter, Megan. Um, and then I am now friends with Paul Bedard, the Gator Boys. Uh, oh, yeah, so he that's reached super out. Cool. And, yeah, that was a really fun contact to make. Did, did you guys get to make a video while you were there? I think we did film some stuff, though it's, you never know when you're working with like a wild animal like that, yes. what you're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. So Jason actually was asking me a question in the car that I think is a really good one, uh, which is looking back on what happened, what, what if anything, do you think went wrong? It, that caused me to be bitten? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I mean, I, we don't manually like put hands to him and push him back like anymore. that anymore, okay. right? Um, so you decided that maneuver just in general is too risky? A little too risky. Because yeah. it seems like, I mean, do you think you executed the maneuver wrong in any way? Or do you think it was just a thing that can happen because the maneuver is imperfect? I think because I had done that with him so much, he was he's really used to it. And so normally when you do that on an alligator, they're not expecting it. And so their head moves up mm -hmm. to 90 degrees. It's like kind of disorienting. Yeah. And then they relax. Mm -hmm. Like every crocodilian relaxes if you put their head up, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but he had become conditioned to expect it. Mm -hmm. And so he had started to do that where he was pushing down on my hand. And I feel like it had that not been the case it would it would still be okay to to be doing that had he not developed that um habit of like pushing back down mm -hmm. but now even if you use a stick or anything like that he he battles you really hard so he's he's really expecting so it so he figured it out yeah and i think had i been wiser i would have found that out or realized that prior to that happening but i mean live and learn yep <laughs> yeah <Well>, fortunately <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so, so, so that's one major adjustment that you've made in the way that you interact with alligators is you don't, you don't do that, the, the push maneuver. I found that maneuver amazing, you know, like, like we, we said, that, you know, last time we talked, when I first saw that, I thought he already had you. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was something you were doing deliberately just because I hadn't seen people do that before. I think since then, since, you know, you talked to me about that, I've noticed it more that that is a thing that people do. Uh, it just like that is that's for for somebody who hasn't worked extensively with crocodilians. That's a pretty surprising thing to see that is even possible to do that. You can just put your hand underneath the jaws of a crocodilian and shove it just backwards. Back. Yeah. 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 No, it is surprising that it works and that it works as well as it does most of the mm -hmm. time. But yeah, they definitely they'll figure you out. This is a really intelligent animal. So yeah. so. So that's that's a, a major thing that you've changed, and is that is that kind of the the only major thing that you've changed? Made some modifications to the enclosure so that that could never this that's worst case scenario. You don't mm -hmm. want to be on the land when the animal is in the water mm -hmm. and it has you because <laughs> that's a really great way to lose a limb. Yes. So made mm -hmm. some modifications to the enclosure as well. Some some procedure changes and then enclosure changes to try to mitigate the chance of a really bad bite ever happening again.
Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> in the aftermath of this incident, like I could see how a lot of people would maybe shy away from wanting to interact with alligators, or at least large alligators again, or anytime soon. How has this impacted you and, and your desire to interact with alligators? And I think that that's completely reasonable. So anybody that did that, I can empathize with them. But I, like I said before, I anticipated that it could happen. Obviously mm -hmm. did everything I thought I needed to, to uh, decrease the chance of it happening as much as possible. Um, but I feel like it'd be kind of silly of me to know that and then start to feel a lot of anxiety about it after it did happen. So I feel, I feel like uh, mentally I was in a, in a good place, um, both before it happening and after it happening. And it, it honestly, like I would have gone back in with him the next day if I could have, <laughs> but obviously didn't. I was in the hospital for a few days. Um, and my introduction back to large alligators was actually first, um, I have a friend out in Colorado that owns a sanctuary for- In Alamosa? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, love Colorado gators. So he kind of got me back mm -hmm. on him. That's cool. And then Paul contacted me and uh, wanted me to come out and see what he was about. And so I went down to Florida and we relocated some nuisance alligators. So you haven't been shying away from the alligators from the sounds of things. Um, <laughs> Not too much. I, I, think, I think one of the big concerns that was lingering before is what's happened to Darth Gator. Yeah, so we kept him, which was a huge relief to me and everybody else that works in Scales and Tales. Absolutely. Um, we modified his enclosure and we actually moved into a, a bigger location. And a lot of that was thanks to some people that saw your last video and, and donated. It um, was incredible how much generosity there was. Yeah, that was incredibly. I, I, was, I was really humbled by that. Like, and, and I think, well, obviously, I mean, maybe not to those people viewing, but we're in a whole different facility yeah. from where you were then. Mm -hmm. And and I just got to have my first little peek at Darth Gator's uh, new, new situation here. And even though it sounds like you guys still want to be able to give him more space, it looks like the amount of space that he has has increased considerably and, and also some changes so that it's a little safer to work with him. Exactly. And that's really, really exciting to see. Uh, you know, here in Florida and stuff, you know, you can keep animals like this outdoors in you know and that's that's a whole other world from having to keep them indoors in Utah right and so so the amount of space that, that can be allocated to them uh, you know is often smaller and I think for that reason a lot of times people that keep larger crocodilians here in, in facilities like this on permits part of their permitting is once they get to a certain size they do need to be moved to a place where they can be kept outdoors um, but but I'm, I'm really excited to see that you guys have been able to do a lot with, with that support from, from so many amazing people. Yeah, it's, we're very grateful. And, and it, you know, it, it probably contributed in, in you guys being able to keep him and, Absolutely. and, and his survival. Because that was, that was my biggest fear, you know, after seeing that you were okay and everybody else involved was okay both physically and emotionally. Like after that, it's like, is, you know, People sometimes kill animals in situations like this. And, you know, where, whereas an argument can be made, I suppose, when a domesticated animal is involved in something like this, it makes zero logical sense to me to do something like that with an alligator who, uh, that's what they're supposed to do, right? Like, 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 when you get bitten by an alligator, it's not because this is a bad alligator, Right. Uh, this is an alligator doing what the alligator was going to do, and, and you made some sort of a mistake, and that's how you got yourself bitten. And that, you know, like, like what, what did you expect the alligator to do? Yeah, exactly. And, and, I, and I appreciate very much also, you know, what you were saying about your mindset in that, you know, you knew this was a possibility, and when it happened, like, you know, that, yeah, it was like, yeah, the, the worst, not even the worst case scenario, but a bad case scenario happened and I've been preparing myself for this all along. I think, I think honestly, you know, that got me thinking like people that do have, you know, really extreme trauma in a situation exactly like that, 
probably some of it is the fact that they hadn't considered the real danger that they were placing themselves in and, and what, what could happen. Kevin. So you know you're in a good place whenever you can hear a kookaburra. That's right. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate that insight. Um, and I'd like to go see Darth Gator if that'd be all right with you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, so this is Darth Gator. Here he is. And tell me, like, how's he doing? He's, he looks, how big is he now compared to what he was then? So he has grown six inches. He was eight foot six when that happened, and he's nine feet now. Um, and he's adjusted to his new space pretty well. Initially, he was kind of um, wary of it, mm -hmm. which was interesting to see because he's been in a similar setup for most of his life. Yeah. Um, but we had him in a temporary enclosure for a few weeks while we built this one out. Mm -hmm. And then reintroduced him to it, and he acted really differently, just kind of um, avoidant for several weeks. After. Avoiding people? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so it was actually really easy for me to get in and train with him during that mm -hmm. time period because he just, you know, he'd go on his side of the enclosure and I could hang out in the water with him or, you know, we did a lot of different desensitization activities at that time. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, I wonder if he hadn't really established this as being his territory exactly. just yet. Yep. And so he was he was in somebody else's territory, and he was like, oh, this is not a good place for me to be. <laughs> I'm a big nervous. male, but I'm not that big of a male that I can just go wherever I want. Right. His osteoderms They're really are sharp. huge. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen an alligator with such tall osteoderms. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what causes that, but they're mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, those, those are, they, they honestly look like smooth-fronted caiman osteoderms, not, not like Versus any alligator. alligator yeah. And yeah, those look like they would hurt a great deal. Um, so what are your interactions like now? So we do the same type of stuff. We added this platform here and a step. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, because this used to be just the edge of the pond, right? Right. And it was a ramp and there was um, fairly frequently an issue with people trying to step down into the enclosure and stepping on the ramp and then sliding into the enclosure. That's ideal. Yeah. So a little splashing never gets the attention of a crocodilian. It's just a lot of fun. No. Um, so we wanted to do a step to make it a little bit easier to enter the water with him. Mm -hmm. And then the platform both gives him a little bit more basking area and then also disables that same, like we were saying earlier, situation from ever playing out again. That's that's excellent. And then it's much deeper. Yeah. Yeah, so formerly this was two enclosures, so we pulled the wall out and gave him the whole thing. That's awesome. Which is nice, yeah. A little bit more water, even with the extension of the land. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm really excited that you guys now have the space to be able to do that for him. That's, that's fantastic, and I'm just, I'm so happy to see that he's alive and thriving. He's doing well, yeah. He, we can... Um, we can try to do some training with him if you want. That'd be wonderful. Okay. That'd be wonderful. Well, one of my favorite things about crocodilians is they have these ISOs, which obviously you're familiar with, but maybe some people watching aren't. ISOs are integumentary sensory organs, and it enables them to feel reverberations in the water. So if I take one of these little Missouri, it's like a gator chow, and toss it in the back of the enclosure there, he's going to turn not because he saw it, but because he felt that. And these are not very heavy. You're probably also very familiar with Missouri, but not heavy at all. Yeah. But so delicious. Yeah. I've heard. <laughs> Darth Gator thinks so. My dog also thinks so. <laughs> I've never tried them, so I couldn't give you an opinion. But I love that, that they're that attuned to what's going on in their environment. And it's also responsible for a lot of the human animal conflict that happens in areas where alligators live naturally. Mm -hmm. um, people that feed alligators in areas where they are. Um, this one causes desensitization, but also conditions the animal to expect to get fed in an area. And so despite there being many signs all over Florida that say do not feed the alligators, people doing this, I think that they don't necessarily understand that this is endangering themselves, their families, their pets. Um, but basically what happens is the alligator feels the splashing in the water mm. and it bites first and thinks like later. Um, again, they're, they're very sensitive to that splashing and this is 
like we were saying earlier, if you get bit by the alligator, it's not the alligator's fault. It's doing exactly what you would expect the alligator to do, although it often or will always results in the death of the alligator and sometimes results in the death of the individual that, um, you know, gets bitten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see all those little pits all over his face. Yep, yeah, so crocodiles have them on every single um, scale on their body. Alligators just have them on the face. Hi, buddy. Darth Gator, stay. Open. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Darth, come. Come. Stay. Open. Go oh boy. That's very good. Come. Stay. Stay. Everybody's going to think you don't listen. So they're not a circus pony. <laughs> Last one, buddy. You do really good. Ooh, slimy. Come. Stay. Nobody gave you a command, Bitty. Why are you doing this? I need you to listen. Stay. Open. <laughs> Do you want to throw Missouri into his mouth, Clint? Sure. Okay. Darth, come. Come, stay, open. Go for it. Hey, good job. Caught it. Hey, nice job. Not everybody that was awesome. gets it in. <laughs> that was awesome. Every time after we do a training, he swims around for hours afterwards and does clean up. A lot to find. Which is great enrichment for him. Oh, yeah. I guess it's probably worth noting, just because people will see him. Uh, it's not normal for alligators' bottom teeth to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like his are. 
Cause, but they come out kind of sideways. Yeah, his bottom jaw has rolled just a little bit, which is not uncommon for alligators in captivity. Yeah, do they know what causes that? Is it just UVB potentially? Yeah, I think that's the leading theory would be that the, um, because they require that UVB to uh, properly digest the calcium. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the lack of that or lack of calcium causes that jaw to kind of start rolling out. It's really hard to um, correct it once it's started to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been an unbelievable and unforgettable experience. If you'd like to come and see Darth Gator and possibly Lindsay, if you get really lucky, come on down to Scales and Tails, Utah, and uh, check this out. It's, this is a pretty special creature. As always, like and subscribe. And we hope to see you real soon. Is he going to bell him? He might burp. Oh, he's just showing us how big his back is. How big this is? I'm all spiky too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Feel better? Give us a bit open.